Good morning. So I've been already introduced. Uh, this is the work uh, from our faculty of Computer Information Science, University of Ljubljana, together with the Institute of Contemporary History. And the authors are uh, uh, on the slide. Oops. So first, a little background that we will that we know what we are talking about. So uh, parliamentary proceedings, uh, they are not just some proceedings, but uh, in a way of history, they reflect also political, uh, social and cultural spirit of the time. So ideas, beliefs that were at that time. So as a, also for historians, they are really invaluable sources of information. And also the research lately kind of shifted uh, from, let's say, history of politics uh, also to history of the political. And that's why the parliamentary corpora is really a necessary source of information for this kind of research. For the contemporary corpora, they're, they're already, at least in Slovenia, they're available. Uh, we had several projects like CIPARAL, that's the corpora for uh, pa parliamentary debates uh, from the Slovenian independence from uh, 1990 to uh, 2018. And also uh, for the recent uh, debates, it's Parliament Corpora, uh, it's uh, in many European languages. Uh, uh, so we have this contemporary corpora. But before that, historical data are non-existent in Slovenia at the moment. Well, not, not anymore, because we, we filled a little bit of this gap. Uh, but also in general, in uh, other countries, these uh, historical data are, or corpora are rare. Uh, so uh, this filling the gap, it's the uh, Carniolan Regional Assembly. That's in Slovenian, it's called Krajinski uh, Dejelni Zbor, or in German, uh, Kreiner Landtag. So let's put it in a bit uh, in the... Uh, background in the history. So that was the highest legislative body of Duchy of Carniola, uh, part of the Habsburg Empire. That was uh, actually uh, Austrian Empire and then Austro-Hungarian Empire. Um, they had like uh, 12 parliamentary terms, uh, started with February patent in February 1861 and ended on the onset of uh, First World War. Uh, it was a single chamber with first uh, 37 members, and then in 98, it was extended to 50 members. Uh, the, this uh, assembly was responsible, let's say, for all laws that were not re reserved for the higher imperial uh, council in Vienna. Uh, so mostly these uh, issues of provincial importance, like agri agriculture, culture, public construction work, uh, economic matters, uh, charity institutes, uh, military, uh, church, uh, municipal, educational issues, that was all dealt with this, uh, in this uh, assembly. So what were our sources? We had scanned an OCR, OCR processed uh, PDF documents. We got them from the Digital Library of Slovenia and uh, History of Slovenia portals. Together, there were 903 PDFs from the period of 1861 to uh, 1913. But we decided to focus on uh, just proceedings, meeting proceedings, because uh, those were 694, and the rest were like um, additional supplement materials, like uh, some laws uh, or uh, reports and so on. Those reports uh, had more complex layout, so we, we left them for further research. 
Uh, the meeting proceedings are in general bilingual, so German and Slovenian. First, they were only in German, and the German was typesetting Gothic. And then, through the years, it shifted towards Slovenian, and the latest were sometimes more in Slovenian than, than in German. Uh, and also, the German was later uh, typeset in Latin script. So meeting, uh, we, we can see here uh, meeting proceedings from the first years. Okay. Um, meeting uh, had a description, so the, the title, uh, attending list, and then the text with uh, who, uh, uh, who said what. Um, and this meeting proceeding is from the last years. We had two columns with Slovenian text and identical, or more or less identical, German text, and then the, the um, agenda, and so that you have an idea how they look like. So what were the challenges, uh, especially varying quality of the OCR? Uh, can be also very poor, especially for the Gothic script, because they were mixing uh, um, letters like S, F, T, sometimes K. Uh, so we had really problems with this. And then changing layouts from, uh, through the years, so from one column uh, to two columns, changing languages, varying styles of agenda, like sometimes in uh, one paragraph uh, separated with dashes, sometimes with semicolons, sometimes one uh, uh, item in, in one line. So really different styles of those meetings. And then also the use of languages, whether the, the agenda was in both languages or just in one language, sometimes just in Slovenian, sometimes just in German. And also those ornaments in the text were really uh, uh, hard thing for, for OCR because it was always OCR as a text. Uh, so what was the procedure? First, we had to uh, have some design decision. So what we'll do, uh, we skip the, the supplementary materials and then uh, we assess the OCR. And in general, it was quite good, like 2% uh, character error rate on most documents, but some documents were really uh, bad, so the, those outliers. We still uh, included them, but we'll have to process them maybe in the next version uh, separately, maybe some pre-processing uh, to be better quality. Um, and then um, also we assess the um, language annotation tools Classla and Trunkit, we, did, we had to decide which one to use. So for German, we use Trunkit, and Classla is uh, trained for Sla on Slavic languages, so it might uh, do better on Slovenian, but at the end, uh, we saw that it was not, not a big difference, like uh, half percent uh, of F score, so we decided to use Trunkit for both German and Slovenian. Uh, so how we got from PDF to XML, uh, we did, uh, we used Python uh, scripts, uh, rule-based, uh, Lingua for um, language detection on a sentence level, uh, Trunkit for uh, tokenization, lemmatization, part of speech tagging, and uh, we started with a random sample uh, of some documents ranging for 15 years, prepared the rules, fine-tuned the rules, and then applied them to the all documents, all six, or, or, or almost 700, and then we fine-tuned again to adjust for, for those differences, and the results uh, uh, were this process documents. We detected layout, find head, headings, text segments, uh, headers, footers, uh, 
assign text to speakers, detect events, uh, extract metadata like title, agenda, list of attendance, beginning, end of meeting. So those are the results. We did it in the uh, XML format, uh, Parla uh, Clarent compl uh, compliant with the XML. And each session is in one file with extracted metadata, uh, just some corpus statistics over, oops, uh, we had uh, 10 million, approximately 10 million words, over uh, 500, uh, 540,000 sentences, 58% uh, in German, uh, the rest in Slovenian, and this is how the XML looks like. What are the uh, future challenges? We want to improve the quality of OCR, extend, extract some additional metadata, especially about the speakers, uh, so the delegates, and maybe also people, countries, places, the uh, name identities. And uh, this is a good basis for the chronic multilingual transnational research that can be done upon this. Uh, Corpora. So if you are interested, here is the URL when you can get the, the corpora and the QR code. Thank you.